Hello and welcome to this first video on work and energy. We're going to be talking about work and its definition and how we can calculate work and then we're going to be looking at its relationship to energy and further on we're going to be talking about energy conservation. So here we go. Um, starting with the definition of work, we can see from this uh, sentence at the top that effectively work has two major um, um, factors. Uh, the first factor is the force that's applied to an object and the second factor is the distance that object is moved. Now the word moved is important. The object has to actually move um, in a certain direction in order for work to be done on that object. So we're looking at force and we're looking at uh, moving a certain distance. The distance moved must actually also be in the direction of the force. So if you've got the two at a different angle to each other, then obviously we have to think about how we're going to resolve the force into the, dis into the direction um, that the distance is being moved. So here we've got five, uh, five little scenarios. Uh, we're going to have a look to see if work is being done in these situations, and if so, by which object. So in this first one, we've got uh, a little boy pushing his possibly mother or sister, I don't know, uh, in a little toy car. And work is being done here because there's a force being exerted by the little boy in this direction and the distance moved by the object is in the same direction. And so work is being done uh, by the little boy on the, um, the little toy car. In the second one here, we've got a stone being dropped. Um, now there's a force on the stone, which is its weight, and the motion is in the same direction. And therefore we have uh, work being done. The work being done in this case is done by the earth itself on the stone. So the work uh, is done in that way. Here we've got a weightlifter who's holding these enormous weights up um, on, on his straight arms. The weights are stationary, which is quite an important point. Now there is obviously a quite large force from these weights acting downwards, um, but there's no motion. There's no distance being moved by the weights for the time that he's holding it up there. So even though it's quite hard for him, there's actually no work being done because there's no distance moved by the weights while he's holding them up. This one here is quite an interesting one with the Earth. Let's just get a different colour. Um, we have uh, the Moon in orbit around the Earth. Now the force on the Moon is towards the centre of the Earth. Now, this is quite difficult to see because it's, um, it's a sort of 3D diagram. Whereas the, the distance moved at this particular instant is in that direction. And this is towards the center and this is tangentially around the circle. So these two are actually at a right angle to each other. And because they're at a right angle to each other, there is no force, either gravitational force, this one here, F, there is no force in the direction of the motion. Okay, so the distance moved is not the same. In fact, it's perpendicular to the force that's being applied. And therefore, even though there's lots of motion and lots of force, there's no work being done in this circular orbit here. And the last one is uh, somebody actually doing some work. Um, and you can see that there will be a force from the pen, uh, or rather from the hand on the pen, and the pen will be moving in the direction of the force from the fingers. So when you do work, you are actually doing work, which is uh, reasonably amusing. Okay. So here are two examples where we've got forces acting in various directions compared to the motion. So in this top one here, we've got um, at the force and the motion, the distance moved or the displacement are in the same direction. So here it's just a case of multiplying the two together. So work equals force times distance, which is probably what you remember from GCSE. Over here, uh, we've got the force which is act acting at an angle theta to the distance being moved. Um, and so what we actually have to do is to resolve this force F down onto the horizontal direction, the direction parallel to the direction of motion. Uh, so effectively we want this component of the force, which is, if you remember from your work on vectors, F times the cosine of theta. So effectively what we end up with is work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta. The cosine of theta you could say actually belongs with the F rather than the D, but we tend to write it out in this order just for um, neatness. Okay, so uh, the more general equation is this one at the bottom, work equals force times the distance moved times the cosine of the angle between them. And here are another couple of examples here. Um, we've got a, um, a cable car going up the side of a mountain. Uh, obviously the force 
is vertical uh, and we're doing work against that gravitational force and therefore the distance moved here is um, not in the same direction that's this is up the way there up the up the uh, cable uh, and therefore we need to know the angle between these two um, the, these two quantities in order to to get the uh, the, di the directions right and this is similar here this is a slightly more simple one um, obviously the sled's motion is in this direction and the force on the cable is up in this direction and there's an angle between them so we would have to find the angle between them and then it would be this force times the distance this guy moves the sled uh, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them and here's a little um, Example of that, numerical example, where um, we have a distance moved, 300 kilometers, um, and an average force that um, Ranulf is pulling on the sled, and the angle between them uh, being 25 degrees. So here we would just use work is equal to force times distance times cosine of theta. And we would just put in the numbers there and just multiply the whole lot together and get our answer, which you can do if you like, and we might go through that one in class. Okay, so that's the basics on work. This is about its relationship with energy. So um, the definition of energy, if you like, is that if an object has energy or a body has energy, um, it has the ability to do work on another object or possibly even on itself. Um, so an object with energy has the ability to do work and actually the amount of work done by the object will be equal to the energy transferred. Right? The two things are equal. They're both measured in joules. Uh, work is measured in joules and energy is also measured in joules. Okay, so here we've got a little diagram showing um, a man pushing a car. The man is doing the work. He's doing work on the car. So the car will be gaining energy, either kinetic energy or thermal energy possibly, um, whereas the man is doing the work on the car. Okay, so that's kind of the relationship between work and energy. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to do a second video on um, energy itself and energy conservation. There's a link right here. So hopefully I'll see you there.